Today's presentation is about going passwordless and boosting cyber resilience with Ubico and Microsoft. Hi, my name is Eric Parknin. I am a senior solution architect at Ubico. Ubico started back in 2007 and has become a global leader in strong phishing resistant authentication solutions. Ubico's core invention is the YubiKey, providing scalable and secure solutions to the largest of organizations, reducing credential theft by 99.9%. Yubico has an impressive collection of over a thousand partner solutions that we work with, and the YubiKey supports all your auth needs and can be your bridge to password list, supporting both legacy OTP solutions and also, also more modern secure phishing resistant options, including with Microsoft solutions, where native phishing resistant support is included with AD, ADSS, and with Enter ID. Let's talk about resilience. This is a headline from CrowdStrike this summer. It's all over the news showing the negative impact that one small change to systems can have for everyday people and for organizations. Probably impacted many of you personally, and to organization it had a huge impact to the tunes of billions of dollars. The CrowdStrike event was not related to outages and authentication, but regardless, it's a good time now to think about the importance of resilience because there have been other recent scenarios that will reference where poor authentication processes did cause wide-scale outages. So we need to be planning today for those unusual circumstances. When you do plan, consider all types of events and scenarios, not only considering the mass outage scenarios, like when primary or second factor off is unavailable due to something like an infrastructure outage, but also look at individual personal events like when an employee who uses their phone as their authenticator, they leave their phone on a park bench or at the airport restaurant. It gets lost or stolen. What do they do? Their credentials are gone. They can't sign in. How do they move forward? So the mass outage scenario and the lost phone scenario are two completely different. And it seems counterintuitive, but just as much time needs to be spent on that second scenario as it could be just as bad or even more disastrous for the organization as that first scenario. So resilience and authentication is made up of many layers, many trade-offs, and of course we can't discuss them all today, but we will focus on three overlapping areas that I see as really relevant for today. We'll look at authentication methods that are supported in Entra ID and the different dependencies. And we'll look at properties of authenticators that contribute to resilience. And we'll look at business processes and creating phishing-resistant users. Microsoft has some architecture pages that describe best practices and describe resilience of authentication methods. And it has great transparency into the different dependencies that each of the auth methods have. For today, we're gonna to look at the green box arrows far to the right, and these are phishing-resistant methods. And these also have the fewest dependencies. It's great that these are the methods that align with the current guidance from NIST and CISA that phishing resistant smart cards and FIDO2 pass keys are the recommended methods to use. So not only are they recommended by NIST and CISA, but they also have the fewest dependencies as described by Microsoft. Now let's look at the different authenticators and different properties of authenticators that are important to resilience. Different authenticators are gonna work with Entra ID. These, I feel, are some of the most important characteristics of authenticators that you should look for when you're thinking about resilience. So first, let's look at purpose-built. These are devices that are purpose-built and hardened for authentication. Devices that are isolated from OS and application software updates and changes. Also, look at exclusivity. Nobody else should have access to the credential but you. It's not on a shared device. So it's not something that a colleague, another employee, or family or friends should be able to get to. Also look for self-sustaining authenticators that aren't reliant on common failure points and they have minimal dependencies. Here's another three important characteristics which will directly tie into the remaining parts of the presentation. Look for portability so that when one platform fails, like in the face of CrowdStrike, you can authenticate on other platforms, including mobile devices, you're gonna have lots of choice. They can also be used for not only authentication, but for other processes like secure onboarding and recovery and during bootstrapping of your other devices. Make sure they work everywhere. And ubiquity. 
Almost every organization has multiple relying parties that they're working with. Not everything is always centralized. Phishing-resistant authenticators need to work with all of them. Working for legacy and on-prem systems, secondary IDPs, password managers, GitHub, or other online accounts, these sometimes aren't federated with your main IDP. And another critical one is redundancy. Users can easily have multiple credentials registered. Users can have a primary authenticator and a backup method in case of theft or loss. This is going to minimize downtime and allow self-service recovery and also avoid dangerous account recovery flaws in those processes. You must, must, must register than one Hoth method. As you examine the characteristics and properties of authenticators in your environment, how do you guarantee that they have any of these? How do you know exactly what hardware is being used in your environment. Registrations should be backed by an attestation statement that we can verify as trusted with cryptographic proofs. For past cases, this is done by a trust anchor that's been published into the FIDO metadata service or FIDO MDS. This capability isn't available for all types of pass keys or all types of authenticators, but it is for many FIDO2 security keys. With a registered security key, like a YubiKey, you can be sure about the properties of the hardware and the properties of the credential. You also know that the credential hasn't been synced or shared, and you know exactly what hardware that credential is on when you're enforcing attestation. Attestation is also useful and necessary for the highest assurance use cases, especially for organizations with compliance and regulations that require authenticator assurance level 3, like as described in NIST 863b. If you ignore attestation, all bets are off on the properties of the authenticators in your environment. Let's talk about phishing-resistant users, the third layer, and resilience. We've all heard about phishing-resistant authentication by now, and we've seen the evolution on authentication. We have seen off evolve from passwords to MFA to phishing-resistant MFA. But OFT is still evolving now, and we're now seeing phishing-resistant users is the next step in that evolution. Most talk today is it's still about phishing-resistant authentication, but phishing resistance is broader than that. It's not only about day-to-day authentication, it's about the whole employee life cycle. Users need to be phishing-resistant throughout their whole life cycle and with every interaction they have with the company. We talked about the characteristics and highlighted three specific ones that were important for resilience. And these three are also critical for phishing-resistant users. Those were portability and ubiquity and redundancy. These three properties support authentication that moves seamlessly with the user and best support phishing-resistant users. Cross-platforms, devices, and business scenarios. These are important in creating a phishing-resistant user. These three properties also support the whole employee life cycle, starting with registrations events. How are the authenticators being bootstrapped? How do you get your primary authenticator enrolled? How about joining devices and bootstrapping other authenticators? Are they bootstrapped with passwords, with taps, or other fishable methods? Focus needs to be put on avoiding using fishable auth methods during every step of the employee life cycle. These are all in scope for attackers, and so we should also have them in scope for making them phishing resistant. These are the common questions we get from customers, and that's because they are pain points for customers and also areas of real concern. This also ties into that lost phone that we saw in the image on the first slide. Phishing resistant users is the answer to all of these questions. What happens when the user loses their key? Best practice guidance is to make sure users are prepared for this. They have a registered backup key so they can self-service recover. You want to avoid remote identity verification where possible. Question two, how do you prevent downgrade attacks? Only support phishing-resistant authentication. Eliminate or minimize where phishable auth methods can be used. It was reported that the 10-day shutdown of MGM Grand was caused by attackers that abused the help desk using information obtained from LinkedIn to get temporary credentials. Avoid downgrade attacks. How about question three, social engineering against the help desk? 
inject phishing-resistant authentication into processes where identity verification is done. Remote identity verification processes are going to be difficult to do securely. Make sure account recovery processes especially are secured. Examine cases like in Hong Kong where the deep fakes in a live video meeting were used to trick someone into transferring the 200 million Hong Kong dollars to the attacker's account. So yeah, look at phishing-resistant users and how you can answer all of these questions. So to summarize things, here's a few takeaways from the presentations. Start your phishing-resistant users' journey with YubiKeys. YubiKeys are an excellent tool to be used as a root of trust to bootstrap all your other authenticators and devices. Don't stop at one phishing-resistant authenticator. Make sure you have that redundancy of credential and redundancy of authenticators. Look at how to best secure bootstrapping and recovery processes, avoiding TAP or other fishable methods. Explore how you can leverage the preview of the Microsoft Graph API for FIDO2 registration. And as you prepare for the Azure MFA mandate, don't forget about your break class accounts. Make sure they're secured with phishing-resistant POP. Best practice guidance has been updated now and FIDO2 security keys are the new recommended authenticator for break class accounts. And don't stop at simply meeting the mandate. Keep the momentum going. Secure all applications, all your users, not only with MFA, but with phishing-resistant MFA using something like a YubiKey. Thank you so much for your time. Feel free to reach out to me at ericparkinen at yubico.com or go to our Yubico help page and contact us there. Thank you.